if we don't have enough to acquire the basic or just cover the basic necessities of life, then what happens? Then we allow the debt to own us, to control us. And then psychologically, what happens is you went from good and you went to bad real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let's say you're in the bad now. Let's say you don't have enough. Let's say you, you, you're living paycheck to paycheck. Let's say uh, it's very difficult to really get out of whatever you call your funk. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that that's permanent. It does not mean that this is for the rest of your life. It does not mean that you're forever going to be stuck. But you will only be stuck if you don't do anything about it. Welcome everybody to another episode of The Human Blueprint. I am Angelo and we're here with Herman and today is, is just going to be a special episode. I can already feel it. This topic is something that we've never really discussed with the public yet and uh, Herman, have we ever discussed this? I have not chosen to because a lot of people have, I would say, not the greatest beliefs or understanding about it. Exactly. And so today we really want to help build better beliefs. We really want to help give better perspective on the topic of money because I don't know how you feel about money. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people, that's all they think about. So we're all on a different, different spectrum with how we feel about money or our relationship with money. And today we really want to cover a few different areas of the good of the bad and of the ugly so that we can spend less time having that maybe negative relationship with money and start to build a more positive relationship with money. So if that sounds like something that you would like to do, then make sure you stay tuned to this episode because you're not going to want to miss this wisdom. So where do we start, Herman? We have the good, we have the bad, and we have the ugly. Let's start with the good. All right, let's start with the good. So, so let me ask you, Angel, let me ask you, what's good about money? Or what do you perceive to be good about money? What's good about money? Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough one. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things that are good about money. I mean, it allows people to do what they love. So I know that some people are able to earn money doing something that they love, doing something that they can actually bring value in the world. And so they get fairly compensated for that. I think money is great when you use it as a tool in order to do good by others, in order to do good by the world. I think that money is good when it's entrusted in the right hands, when somebody that has the money actually has a pure heart and good intention. So I think it's, as I'm talking, to me, it seems like it's less about money. It's more about the caretaker of it. And I think if the caretaker is good, then money can be a great thing. Okay. That's so, what a, so Herman, what, what about you? <laughs> so here, picture this. For everybody that's listening or watching, what's your relationship with it first? So before we go further, take out uh, a note or a bill, as they call it, put it in your hand. At the biggest bill you have, whatever it is, put it in your hand, okay? Put it in your hand. Get comfortable with it. Get comfortable with it in your hand. Get comfortable with it on you. Get comfortable with it being easily accessible. Get comfortable with it knowing that it's abundantly there. Get comfortable with it that you're going to receive more of it for all you do. Get comfortable in all the different aspects first because if you're never comfortable with it, then that relationship that you have with it will determine whether it, whether you can get more and acquire more or whether you're repelling it. There's so many people with a negative relationship with that Angelo that we've spoken to, and they are very, very closed off where they think, oh, it's bad, it's dirty, it can't have this. Uh, if you want to be spiritual, you're supposed to be broke. All these false beliefs, all these nonsense, okay? Yeah. But you need things of resources so that you can go out and make a greater difference for those that don't necessarily have as much. 
That's the idea. So if you have resources and you have access to resources, then you have more to offer to the world. But if you don't have any of the resources, then what can you do to offer more to the world? You just sit there, look up in the sky and pray. That's not going to do much. You have to have resources and resources are where we have to learn to create and build those. And so the good about it is, yes, let's say you have a job. Let's say you earn money. Let's say you are compensated for what you do to the, for the world. That's okay. But do you keep it as cash or do you convert it into something better? Because remember, this is much value you bring into the world and you value back and compensate it. You are then going to be tasked with a crossroad. Let's say a new phone comes out. Let's say new shoes come out. Let's say new purse comes out. Let's say um, so-and-so is in town, new concert comes out. Let's say this, let's say that. New restaurant comes out. So all these different things are the temptation to say, you know what? You got something shiny in your pocket or in your account, right? Uh, we want we want a little piece of that. And so mm -hmm. the good is like, okay, you have acquired some assets, you have acquired some wealth in terms of whatever you want to call it, cash, money, whatever. The key is not to blow it. The key is to keep it as good as possible. The key, the key is to save it, invest it, and grow that, right? Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, what do they do? As soon as they get paid, they don't think of tax. As soon as they get paid, they don't think of what actually is the take-home net versus gross revenue they don't they don't focus on how how can they grow the capital they have because remember the system that is being played at hand the whole idea is to make sure you don't have access to a lot of that capital mm -hmm. think of it e even when you go to the bank and you want to withdraw more than two to five grand what happens you need to put an order in a few days before because they don't keep that on hand mm -hmm. but yet your account says maybe there's 10 grand and you're like well i want to access two of it, they said, so you're going to have to let us know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So that's why when we talk about the good, it's to make sure that your capital is not being siphoned. It's not going to be drained. It's not leaking because the good of it is that once you have that capital, then you're able to convert that into greater assets. And one of those great assets is real estate. That's why you look at some of the biggest, wealthiest people, they take the debt known as cash, right? That's why it's called a $10 bill, a $5 bill, because it's debt. You take that, then you reinvest into an asset that appreciates over time. So let's say that asset's real estate. Then let's say it appreciates at 6% per annum. And then let's say it's an income property. So let's say you're making the rent. So you cover all the expenses plus, plus extra, at least 20%. You have all these things. So it's appreciating. You're, you're covering all the expenses. And you put that capital that you saved and worked so hard into something that you invested into that. So that when you invest into that, then you go and you, you take the equity out of that and then you go into another property. So it's like you're taking something that's a debt ridden piece of paper and you turn it into something more tangible that can appreciate. The good of it also is you have more freedom. Mm -hmm. See, when you have a lot more of it, then you have more freedom to do the things you want, when you want, how you want. What's the problem with that, Angelo, if we don't have what we just said in your pocket? What's the problem if you don't have the money? You just, you don't have freedom. You're just a slave. You know, all your time is going towards actually making the money so that you can continue to be in that cycle of earning it. And then maybe you have bills or whatever, everything coming in. And it's just like, you're just, head is just above water. And debt is just the modern day slave. Exactly. Think about that. You're paying debt on debt on debt. So many people are in pain. So many people are in agony because they were never educated. They didn't necessarily want to educate themselves. They just think, okay, well, the system says go to school, get the job, and, you know, have kids and get married and just work that same job. But the problem with that is in today's world, sometimes that job isn't enough. So you need two jobs, you need three jobs because in the old days when you had the one job, like the house was not even 10 to 20% of everything you made in a year. The car was not even 10% of what you made in a year. 
food was so abundantly accessible, right? Like how much was a loaf of bread was like one penny or like a dollar or something depending on the era. So it was like, you look at all that and then it's like you, today's world because of inflation, which is a hidden debt and a hidden tax. What happens is you're going to notice things are going to get bad very soon if you don't understand how to keep things good. If you don't understand how to take the capital you have so that you can learn to save it, invest it, grow it, harvest it, capitalize more on it. So if you don't understand that and you want to be in the good, but you're doing everything in the bad, which is spend more than you have, you know, put it on the credit card. You mm -hmm. know what? I'll, I'll worry about that later. You know, Christmas time, you pay everything and January is like, Deer in the headlights. I don't know how this happened. Like you look at all these different things and things get bad, real ugly, real fast. Yeah, definitely. So to me, it's like w when you just went through that, it almost sounded like a farmer. So it's like you have seeds, you plant it, you make sure it's good soil, you make sure it has sun, you make sure it has water, you make sure you take care of it. And it's almost like the same thing with your money. It's like money is the seed but what are you going to do to add more water, add more sunshine? And maybe that's like saving, investing, doing these different things, setting up different things so that you don't have to be, you don't have to starve. Like you can have a harvest and you could take care of yourself. So that was like one, one thing that I was thinking of when you were talking. And then another thing is that it just seems like money is just like any other, any other thing that we have. We just place a lot more, I would say value on it. So it almost like complicates it in society where a lot of families, like they don't talk about it. It's something that they don't want to talk about because when it gets brought up, people just have like these eerie feelings about it. So maybe there tends to be a lot of arguments or a lot of um, just conversations that people don't see eye to eye. I mean, I've seen so money do so many different things to people, but it's just like anything else. And I think we're the, we're the ones that actually complicate it. I would agree with that. And here's the thing. Money is actually a currency. So let's say you're in America, Angelo, you have a certain currency. You go to Asia, they have a different currency. You go to Europe, they have a different currency. Do you know where that word comes from? I'm not going to spoil it because I seen a video. <laughs> Uh, quite some time ago where you actually talked about this and so let's ask everybody viewing do you know what currency actually means type Leave it a down comment below. below yeah so we'll give them a second angela to type because i don't want to spoil it i want people to you know really see if they understand how the system works so picture this the reason why it's called a bank it's because the river has a river bank so where the river would go, it would be where it would be the deposit or the area as to where the majority of people can go to a harbor or can go to where they would have a port that they can take one thing to somewhere else or something somewhere else to come here. So they would normally take a river and then they would hit the river bank as to where they would place the port in the most strategic position at the time so that they could maximize the efficiency of things coming off the ships and going on the ship. Okay. So we have this river in the bank, and then what happens is there's a certain current that is underneath the water that moves the water in a specific area or a specific direction. So if you look in the, in, on Earth and in the oceans, they all follow a very specific current based on the specific geological area as to where you are. So ships have to understand, especially people who are captains, they understand where the currents are moving. They have the most state-of-the-art technology now for the ships, especially cruise ships, that they would know where the current is going and how to avoid certain types of bad currents that would pull you or be stronger or go against you. So you want, it's a lot easier to go with it than to go against it, correct? Yeah, definitely. I remember when I was on vacation once, this is just a side note, and we, I was in the ocean and it was one of the scariest things because the wave took me in, it sucked me in. And as soon as it did that, I started to panic a little bit and it was, it was scary. I got over, I just got taken over by the current and that was how strong it was. And so 
a lot of people then use the term for money, which would be just anything, whatever it is, but it's the currency that, that goes, that flows towards you to maybe where you choose to spend it on towards what your family chooses to, or what your neighbor chooses to spend it on. So it just moves, right? So it's like the oil of an engine. So you want to make sure that you have enough of it so it can keep going. Okay. It's like the oil in the economy. And so here's the thing. If we don't have enough to acquire the basic or just cover the basic necessities of life, then what happens? Then we allow the debt to own us, to control us. And then psychologically, what happens is you went from good and you went to bad real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let's say you're in the bad now. Let's say you don't have enough. Let's say you, you, you're living paycheck to paycheck. Let's say uh, it's very difficult to really get out of whatever you call your funk. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that that's permanent. It does not mean that this is for the rest of your life. It does not mean that you're forever going to be stuck. But you will only be stuck if you don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Are you doing something right now to learn something new every day? Are you doing something right now to figure out other types of currency? See, everybody thinks money is everything, and it's not. It's just money is your religion. I will repeat that. Money has become people's religion, society's mm -hmm. religion. Honest, people actually worship it. People actually do anything for it. Yeah. They think it's necessary, but it's not. Because if you work on the other currencies that actually generate real wealth, you'll understand that real money is the byproduct of all those other currencies. So give an example. When you hear wealth, you don't just hear wealth as what's in your pocket. Wealth of knowledge. Wealth of assets. Which means an abundance of. Mm -hmm. In Chinese, we say yu, which is very similar sounding to fish. So when you see a school of fish, it doesn't just travel by itself. They all come together, yeah. right? They all swim together. They, it's called a school of fish because why? Huh, they're always adapting and learning. So mm -hmm. when they're adapting and learning, they have to know where the currency goes so that they go with it so that they can survive. If we're always going against that currency and we're going against it and against it and against it. Basically, our egos are in the way we don't want to think or hear that someone knows better than us. And so we just stay stuck to the first thing that's comfortable. That's not learning. That's not growing. That's not expanding. Yeah. And I would say that's honestly probably most people. And that's, that was me for such a long time. And there's still areas of my life where I just, for some reason, try to go against the current, but then I just realize, you know what, why am I trying to go against the current? <laughs> Why don't I just go with, with the natural way and humble myself so that I can get better results? See, another currency is relationships. And this is something that people fail at. If you have harvested a good relationship, if you have good PR, if you have good marketing skills, if you have good sales skills, if you know how to sell yourself, what's going to happen is the doors are going to open and then the byproduct would be what people consider to be the money. Or, or the compensation. But if you don't have the currency of relationships, if you don't have the currency of understanding the wealth, if you don't have the currency of developing people, which is basically taking a nobody and make it into a superstar, that's what I train people to do. That's what I do every day. If you don't have these things, then nothing's going to be flowing to you. You will actually go in, going against it because life is showing you that you have to learn, you have to adapt. But if you were going to go against it and you just want to stay stuck and just want to know where the rest of your life went, then it's because you didn't do anything proactive. You were only reactive. And money likes to respond to action. So if you invest a dollar today at 1%, it will be worth more by the end of the year. But if you just have the $1 and you just put it in the pocket and it was not invested, it's most likely going to be spent on something. And it's mm -hmm. probably not going to be an investment. And so right there, that's how things got back. Because not enough was invested, not enough was planted, not enough big picture. Understand? Yep. And when things get bad for too long, Angelo, what happens? What's the next after bad? Ugly. Uh, so give me an example, Angelo, from what you've seen growing up or people that you know of, of what you consider to be ugly. Let's go over that a bit. 
Yeah, let's do it. So ugly would be where there's arguments, there's fights, there's conflict, there's hurting. And notice that none of these really have to do with money. They more so have to do with, with relationships, with the wealth, with the other currencies that you talked about. So I think when it gets ugly, it's to the point where money has really put you in that position where you feel like you're a slave or you feel like you're a victim and then it affects the other areas of your life. So maybe that means you start to take on other vices because maybe you need an escape. So what I have personally seen growing up is people have wronged family members over money and business. I've seen arguments, I've seen fights, I've seen people turn to other substances like alcohol or other drugs because the debt is just too much. And so that is, that's when it gets ugly because I mean, that affects your happiness. And I know a lot of people say like money doesn't buy you happiness. And that's, I think that's another episode so, because we could definitely give some different point of views on that one. But at the end of the day, like when money is impacting your happiness, like I think that's when it gets ugly. Yeah. And one thing to add on to that, Angelo, is the ugliness happens when you yourself become so bitter with the relationships you have with people, relationships you have with money itself, or relationships you have with self-worth, relationships that you have with, you know, the value you bring to the world. Like if all of that becomes bitter and it becomes where all you do is look for pity or all you do is feel sorry for yourself or all you do is look for people to feel sorry for you, then that needs to be your wake up call that, you know, something's got to change and some things have to be changed so that greater change can occur. Yeah. And I know I had, I had to have my wake up call too, because when I started out, all that I could think about was money. Like when I got older, when I got to the point when I was in high school. And so I joined a network marketing company and was like sold a dream. And a lot of good things came from that, but also some negative things did come from that because I was in it for so long that I started to develop these very negative beliefs that were very deep things like oh I'll, I'll never succeed in this um i'm not good enough things like that and so after that company was done and over with i tried a lot of other things and when i say tried like i use that word intentionally because it wasn't like i was fully committed to anything so i would try to like try to open up a brick and mortar business doing it starting out in the basement so <laughs> That's a whole different story. Um, went, you know, tried selling life insurance, but didn't really follow through with that. But I was chasing the money all every single time. I was just chasing the money, chasing the money. And it eventually made me develop these very negative beliefs. And I think the biggest one was that I'm only as valuable as how much money I have. And so I know that this is something that Herman has told me multiple times. He, he told me never associate how much value you bring with the amount of money that's in your pocket. And I think that helped me so much because all I could think about was that like, I wasn't worthy enough or I wasn't valuable enough because I didn't have money. I didn't have this. I didn't have a certain number in my bank account. And so that was huge for me because it led me to the ugliest. Like when I was in it, we, I went to the ugliest and the ugliest is when I couldn't be happy for other people who had it or who were, or who were having success. And that think, is the ugliest. I think a lot of people do that Angelo where, because they didn't do what's necessary in the good things got bad, things got ugly. So then once they're doing that, because they, there's, no, there's no reset button that they could just press and magically it go away. But it's because there was not a lot of accountability that where things got ugly. So then when things got ugly, it's, it's where a lot of people don't realize how bad and how low it is to like not celebrate or feel happy when someone gains a win or when someone has a win or when someone gets ahead in life. People are so quick to cut them down. People are so quick to 
judge, criticize because they're bitter that they're not that person or it's not them that's in that position or has what they have. Exactly. So if you're somebody who's in that position, what could you do? Which position? Like ugliest? Like, yeah, if you're in the ugliest, obviously there's, there's a lot to, to get out of that position and get back to good. Mm -hmm. But just in regards to the feeling of like not being able to celebrate somebody else's success, what do you have any words for that person? understand how it works which means when you think of money what's the first thing that comes to your head is it the new iphone is it the new tv is it the new shoes is it the new purse what's the first thing that comes to your head because that's the first sign if it's to spend it that's why you can't keep it second part if you are looking towards external means which means buying things to make yourself feel good internally then that's also a big no-no because you have an internal problem which means you need to face it internally it doesn't mean you go externally to fix something that's internal because that that equation doesn't add up mm -hmm. it's not going to work you know, exactly. you, that's how people get addictions that's how people get bad habits to start because you're looking for something that doesn't necessarily fit internally but we want to fix it internally from an external source it doesn't work. It's like you're looking to put a square peg in a round hole. It's not going to work. So next part, if you want to really get out, really understand money, which means understand the tax, understand your tax bracket, understand um, who your, I would say, money manager is. If it's not you, find someone you can confide in, find someone that you know that's really good to help you consolidate your debt, help you learn about the debt, help you learn how to leverage it and get out of it so that you never have to go back into it until absolutely necessary. Understand like where you are as a person in terms of risk, because a lot of people are very low risk takers when they do a chart or they do an assessment and they realize they don't like to take any risk, but every single day they're taking the biggest risks of all when they're spending all of their capital when they're not saving it when they're not planting those seeds to invest it and grow it that's a big risk because then it affects your family and the generation that comes after so really i would say like people have to really learn and educate themselves and understand these things right and every area is different exactly. if you're in europe you're different america you're different so yeah every I, I would say everybody's position is extremely di different based on your circumstances and I think the best thing that anybody could do is to, like you said, educate yourself and create a plan. So if you don't have a plan, especially with your money and you just treat it like whatever, or you have the negative relationship with it, then it's, you know, you're never going to get back to the good. And I think the other thing that I've learned through this process is don't spend your time in the ugly, don't spend your time in the ugliest because that doesn't do good for anybody. And in fact, there's a lot more harm to you than I think money, money could ever do. Like, I think the fact of sending negative energy towards other people and not being able to celebrate their success, you know, really devaluing yourself and, and who you are. I think those are probably some of the worst things that could happen. So if you're in that position, just understand that you're not alone, number one, and you can get through it. You can have a breakthrough. You, can't, you don't have to live life that way. Maybe you just need a little guidance. Maybe you just need a, a, a different set of beliefs to help get you past that. And I think if people who are listening to this that are not already part of our Facebook group, they need to click the link below and join because that's where we really grow our community so that everyone has that support so that we can help each other get through tough times, low times, high times, so that everybody learns to help support one another. And I feel this is the next step for all of us is to make sure we support one another through any times we're going through to, to learn that, you know, we don't have to do it by ourselves. Exactly. So if you're not already a part of it, then please join us. I mean, this community is so much fun. It's supportive, it's positive, And we like to keep things engaging every single day. So every day there's something new going on. 
So if you're really about growth and you're really about just making your life better, then this is the place to be. So with everything being said about money, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the ugliest, I think that my biggest takeaway from this episode is, is it's about the ugly, ugliest because I've been there before and I have, you know, really siphoned my self-belief. I've really devalued myself based on money and I really have had some of that comparison, you know, in the past. And so that is just not a good place to be in and you don't have to be there. Like if you're going through that stuff, just know that there's, there's a better way. There's a better alternative and you just need to join us in on the Facebook group so that you can be a part of other people who are all about growth and all about getting to the next level as well. Exactly. Remember, everything's a choice, Angelo and everyone listening. It's a choice. You can choose to stay stuck or you can choose to go the other way. It's the same amount of energy, if not more, to stay stuck because you have to constantly reinforce negative beliefs to stay where you want to stay, to validate what you're doing. So I believe if everyone could just pivot just one degree, just one degree, take one little thing out of this one degree and just pivot and pivot. And we can see much better results in a short period of time, but you have to be open to understanding that you can't be defeated. You can't be the victim. That time's over, right? That era is over. It's time for you now to pick up your socks, put your, I would say, best, I would say best suit of armor on, if you will, and then get to it. Because sometimes people become so, what's the word? Sensitive? And shy, sensitive and shy, that they'll put all this energy just for one step. And the second that the one step didn't go exactly what they expected as to what they wanted or to what they perceived, they go right back a thousand steps to where they were. And that's why the suit of armor is there to help you understand. Once we show you how to build that, then it's like, you know what? I did take that one step. Yes, this is my new standard. Let's go take two next time. Let's take five next time. You know what? Where was I five years from ago? Because I don't even recognize that person in the photo. I like, I, I'm in love with the person I'm seeing now in the mirror. That's where we go because that's what it's talking about. And one of the side effects we have in our group is you will never ever question or have doubt because the side effect that just rubs off of myself to the rest of everybody else is that you'll always have the support. You'll always have people supporting you through the toughest of times to get through the toughest of things. And if that's a side effect that you don't want, that's okay. But if it's a side effect that you want to be a part of, and it's a side effect that you want to have radiate through you so that you can achieve greater things in life, then you know where to be. Exactly. Wow. I I can relate to that, Herman. Like you said, five years looking back and just, loving who you are now and just amazed at the growth. I think for me, I haven't even known you for five years. You know, I still got a year plus to go, but I'm already feeling that. So thank you. And, you know, we appreciate everybody that's on the same journey with us. Again, the link to join the Facebook group is going to be in the description. So be sure to join us there. And we want to hear your feedback. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear, you know, what, What changed about your relationship with money? At the beginning of the episode, Herman said to hold it and feel it and really think about that relationship you have with it. Well, after learning about the good, the bad, the ugly, after learning about really the wisdom that Herman shared about the the meaning of money and the understanding of it, you know, there's so much to it. And we want to hear what shift happened with you on this episode. So comment below and let's, Let's have a deeper conversation about it. Thank you. Thanks so much.